WZZM TV 13 is proud to present a musical museum performed by the Grand Rapids Symphony. Today's live broadcast is being brought to you by Keyboard World and Delta Dental. Good afternoon and welcome to the Grand Rapids Symphony's Family Series Concert. I'm Lee Vanamy. And I'm Juliette Regis, and we are coming to you live from DeVos Hall in downtown Grand Rapids, where the nationally recognized award-winning Grand Rapids Symphony will help celebrate the opening of Grand Rapids' new Van Andel Museum Center. Today's performance is one of three Family Series concerts given by the symphony each season, and it promises to be a lot of fun as associate conductor John Barano leads us through the sights and sounds of the world around us. TV 13, as always, is proud to be here, and we invite you now, you and your family, in fact, to sit back and enjoy the great music performed by the Grand Rapids Symphony, right after this. She's also on the board of Grand Rapids.
Well, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this concert by the Grand Rapids Symphony Orchestra. You know that today we're being broadcast on television, even right now, and that's why we have all of these wonderful things happening. The WZZM is broadcasting us right now. We're celebrating the opening of uh, the newest addition to the downtown area, the, Grand, uh, the new Grand Rapids Public Museum just across the river. And that piece that we just played for you, and God created base, uh, great whales, reminds me of uh, the great whale that's hanging up in the new museum. You know, museums are wonderful because uh, they tell us about our past. The next piece of music that we're going to play uh, for you tells about the specific past. It's by Donald Dillard, who is an African-American composer. This piece won a composition contest with the Detroit Symphony Orchestra just last year. And it tells about uh, the past of an African-American within the United States. And here to tell us the story of childhood scenes, won't you please welcome Miss Faye Richardson. The street vendor hawks his wares. A young man and his son call attention to their collard greens, string beans, cantaloupe, and watermelon. The milkman makes his way in a horse-drawn wagon who's clopping over cobblestones. Children, at cautious play, knowing full well their chores are not done, scamper when a door is opened and one playmate is scornfully called inside. A group of older boys swagger down the street, doing their best to impress the female observers. At dusk, all gather on the front steps to hear the latest scary tale, wistfully told by a respected teen sage. When a drunk appears and bellows in his best voice, What's the matter with Monroe Avenue tonight? Whereupon the street is swept clean of frightened youngsters in an instant as they disappear behind closed doors and seek refuge among their families. Thank you. 
there always seemed to be a cool wind blowing when we went to school in the morning. And the school bell always seemed to be just a little too loud as we walked into the schoolyard and made our way into our classroom. And the desks always seemed to be a little too hard as we sat there doing our studies and listening to our teacher. There was history and English, science and gym, spelling and geography, and the endless problems in math. Y you know, the ones where you, sh you were sure you had the right answer? but not quite. I would take them home to my parents and my brothers and sisters to see if they could help me, but they didn't know the right answers either. Sometimes, the teacher would leave the room for a minute, and then everybody would stop working on their problems and begin to play. They would shout names at each other and begin throwing things. And often, all you could see in the air were moist wads of paper and pea shooters shooting peas, and maybe a board eraser or two. But all this would come to a quick halt when the teacher came back into the room. We would all quickly return to our English and history and science and math, and you could hear a pin drop. And maybe, just maybe, if I really tried, I would even get the right answer. Every Sunday, our whole family would go to church. We would all dress up in our best clothes and be on our best behavior. And we would sit right down front so we could see and hear everything. The church was big, and there were a lot of adults there, but there were a lot of children, too. Standing down at the front of the church, there was a deacon or elder who would begin the singing in a big, strong voice raising his eyes to heaven. He would start by himself singing a melody called a chant. Then the other adults would join in singing with him in beautiful harmony. It was exciting to hear those chants sung so strongly. Sometimes, someone else would stand up and begin singing another song all by themselves. But soon others would begin to join in and harmonize the song. Everybody seemed to know all the tunes. After a while, 
someone would come in and begin playing a gospel song on the piano and a choir would join in singing the gospel song. I liked to listen to the fancy way the pianist would add notes to the melody. Sometimes it almost sounded like real jazz music. It wasn't really jazz. It was just a very exciting way to worship in church on Sunday. is my favorite sport. Although I was never really good at it, I sure like to play. And I love to watch. My friends and I had a baseball team, and every day in the summertime, we'd go to the ball field and practice. Sometimes we would play other teams, but we weren't in a real league. I remember when the chicks came to town. I used to watch those ladies play and think to myself, wow, what would it be like to play in front of all those screaming fans? From the first play ball to the final out, baseball summed up all that was truly American, where any guy or girl had a chance to be the hero for a day. <laughs> When I was small, I used to sit for hours on the steps inside our house and listen to my big brother play the piano. It all sounded so wonderful. I wanted to be able to play like that too. 
After weeks and weeks of listening, I finally asked my brother to show me how to play a song on the piano, and he did. He even showed me how to read the music that was written on the paper. I was so excited. I just started trying to learn all the music I could find. When I got a little older, my mother let me take piano lessons. My teacher taught me to play songs and scales and finger exercises. The scales and exercises were hard to do, but I discovered when I really practiced my scales and exercises, I could play everything so much better. Every day, I would go to the piano and learn more and more songs, even songs by famous composers. While I was busy playing the piano, somewhere a baseball game was being played and lost because a certain someone wasn't there to play. Me. You've been watching the Grand Rapids Symphony's A Musical Museum, led by associate conductor John Verano. We'll be back in a moment with a special museum video presentation after these messages. Welcome back to our live broadcast of A Musical Museum with the Grand Rapids Symphony, featuring scenes from the new Van Andel Museum Center. You know, normally I conduct the Grand Rapids Symphony, but here I am touring the public museum of Grand Rapids' new Van Andel Center. What a great place this is. Museums are so neat because they show us who we are and what we are. This train station, for instance, shows us what travel was like about 100 years ago. And Arthur Oniger, he wrote this piece of music to demonstrate what a train sounds like. Uh-oh, that sounds like my train. Gotta go.
Grand Rapids was founded over 150 years ago. People came from all over the world to start a new life here. Maybe your great-great-grandparents walked down a street that was similar to the 1890s exhibition here at the museum. You know, there weren't such things as malls and supermarkets back then, but everybody knew everybody else by their first name. part of the museum is the environmental section. I get to see what a water drop looks like magnified 200 times. Yuck. Or check out what that hawk is doing over there. You know, as areas like this get rarer and rarer, the museum enables us to see it all, naturally.
Do you ever wonder what life was like for the people who were here before the European settlers? You know, our attitudes towards what we used to call the Indians, the Native Americans, are changing and improving. This exhibit, the Anishinaabek people of this place, is opening in June. I'm going to have to come back for this one.
fixed and fun. No matter what you're looking for, space age laser at the planetarium to a ride on this magnificently restored carousel, the Van Andel Museum Center has it. Whether you're seven or 70, there's something here for you. I should say that next year, our family series has a lot of great music too, so we hope to see you again then. M make sure you come out. Bye. enjoyed TV 13's live broadcast of the Grand Rapids Symphony celebrating the new Van Andel Museum Center. You know, this family series concert was just a fantastic way to introduce kids at home and here at the Voss Hall to music and the great Grand Rapids Symphony. So true. For all of us at TV 13, thanks for watching and have a great rest of the weekend. Bye. enjoyed a musical museum as performed by the Grand Rapids Symphony. Today's live broadcast has been brought to you by Delta Dental and by Keyboard World.